Welcome to Edupedia World. In this video, we will learn regarding educational sector in India. What are the educational achievements in India? And what are the future prospects in educational sector? First, we will discuss educational sector in India. Growth in government expenditure on education. The expenditure by the government on education is expressed in two ways. First is as a percentage of total government expenditure. It indicates the importance of education in the scheme of things before the government. During 1952 to 2002, it increased from 7.92 to 13.17. Now we come to the second way that is as a percentage of GDP that is gross domestic product. It expresses the proportion of income spent on development of education in the country. During 1952 to 2002, it increased from 0.64% to 4.02%. The increase in education expenditure has not been uniform and there has been irregular rise and fall. However, if we include the private expenditure incurred by individuals and by philanthropic, that is charitable institution, the total education expenditure will be much higher. Some important points regarding government expenditures. Government spends more on elementary education. Elementary education that is primary and middle school education takes a major share of total education expenditure. Share of higher or tertiary education that is institution of higher learning like colleges, polytechnics and universities is the least. Next is government expenditures on tertiary education, which is important. On an average, government spend less on tertiary education. However, expenditure per student in tertiary education is higher than that of elementary education. But it does not mean that financial resources should be transferred from tertiary to elementary education. As we expand school education, we need more teachers, who are trained in the higher educational institution. So expenditure on all levels of education should be increased. Next is differences in educational opportunities across states. The per capita education expenditure differs considerably across states from as high as Rs. 3,440 in Lakshwadi to a low as Rs. 386 in Bihar. This lead to differences in educational opportunities and attainments across states. Now we come to inadequate expenditure on education. The expenditure on education is very less as compared to the desired level of education expenditure that is recommended by the various commissions. More than 40 years ago, the Education Commission had recommended that at least 6% of GDP should be spent on education. However, the current level expenditure is little over 4%, which is quite inadequate. Now, the next point is provision of free and compulsory education. In December 2002, the Government of India made free and compulsory education a fundamental rights of all children in the age group of 6 to 14 years. To achieve this aim, Government needed an estimated expenditure of around Rs 1.37 lakh crore over 10 years. In the union budget 2000 to 2005, the government of India levied a 2% education cess on all union taxes. The government estimated to get revenue of Rs 4,000 to 5,000 crores and the entire amount was allocated for spending on elementary education. In addition to this amount, the government sanctioned a large outlay for the promotion of higher education and new loan schemes for students to pursue higher education. Government has initiated number of schemes regarding primary education to achieve its dream of education for all. There are various schemes. We are only discussing three such schemes here. First one is Sarva Shiksha Abhiyan that is SSA. After the district primary education program of 1994, the government launched the Sarva Shiksha Abhiyan. It was launched in 2001 to universalize and improve the quality of 
elementary education in India through community ownership of elementary education. The SSA is being implemented in partnership with states to address the needs of children in age group of 6 to 14 years. The achievements under SSA up to September 38, 2007 include construction of 1,70,320 school buildings, construction of 7,13,179 additional classroom, provision of 1,72,381 drinking water facilities, construction of 2,18,075 toilets, opening of 1,86,985 new schools, supply of free textbook to 6.64 crores children and appointment of 8.10 lakh teachers. So these are all achievements under SSA. Now we come to the next scheme that is National Program for Education of Girls at Elementary Education. The program aims to enhance education for girls by providing additional support for development of a model girl child friendly school under NPEGEL 35,252 model schools have been opened in addition to supporting 25,537 early childhood care and education centers. Beside 24,387 additional classroom has been constructed and 1.85 lakh teachers have been given training on gender sensitization. Now we come to the next scheme that is Kasturba Gandhi Balika Vidyalaya. The scheme was launched in July 2004 for setting up residential schools at upper primary level for girls belonging predominantly to the SC, ST, OBC and minority communities. The scheme ran as separate scheme for two years but was merged with Sarva Shiksha Abhiyan with effect from April 1, 2007. As on October 31, 2007, 1,564 KGBVs are functional and 1,9786 girls were enrolled in them. So these are some of the primary education scheme of the government which are running. Now we come to the next topic that is educational achievements in India. Generally educational achievements in a country are indicated in terms of adult literacy level, primary education completion rate and youth literacy rate. As we can see in the table, first we will see adult literacy rate. It refers to the ratio of literate adults population to the total adult population in a country. In case of males, the adult literacy rate increased from 61.9% in 1990 to 68.4% in 2000. And in case of females, the literacy rate was just 37.9% in 1990, which increased to 45.4% in 2000, which is still far below the satisfaction level. Next heading is primary completion rate. It is the percentage of students completing the last year of the primary school. In case of male, the primary completion rate increased from 78% to 85% in 2000. And in case of females, the rate increased from 61% in 1990 to 69% in 2000. Now we come to the third heading that is youth literacy rate. It is the percentage of people ages 15 to 24 who can with understanding read and write a short simple statement on their everyday life. In case of males, there was marginal increase in youth literacy rate from 76.6% to 79.7% in 2000. And in case of females, the youth literacy rate increased from 54.2% in 1990 to 64.8% in 2000. So from these data, we can say that the educational achievement is growing both in male and female considerably in India. Now we come to the point that what are the future prospects in educational sector? Education for all still a distant dream. The literacy rates for both adults as well as youth have increased. However, the absolute number of illiterates is still as much as India's population was at time of independence. In 1950, it was noted in the directives of the constitution 
that the government should provide free and compulsory education for all children up to the age of 14 years. Had we done this, we would have achieved 100% literacy by now. But it is not achieved yet. Next point is gender equity. Better than before we can say that. The differences in literacy rates between male and female are narrowing. It indicates a positive development in gender equity. However, women education needs to be promoted to improve economic independence and social status of women. And women education makes a favorable impact on fertility rate and health care of women and children. So we cannot be satisfied about the upward movement in the literacy rates until 100% literacy rate is achieved. The next is higher education. That is a few takers only for that. The Indian education pyramid is steep indicating lesser and lesser number of people reaching the higher education level. Moreover, the level of unemployment among educated youth is the highest. As per NSSO data in 2000, the unemployment rate of educated youth, secondary education and above was 7.1% and unemployment of people with up to primary education was only 1.2%. Therefore, the government needs to increase allocation for higher education and also improve the standard of higher education institutions so that students are imparted employable skills in such institution. Now, after discussing all these stuff, now we come to the conclusion. The economic and social benefit of human capital formation and human development are well known. The union and state governments have been allocating substantial amount for development of education and health sectors. The spread of education and health services across different sectors of society should be ensured so as to simultaneously attain economic growth and equity. India has a rich stock of scientific and technical manpower in the world. We need to improve its quantitatively and provide such conditions so that they are utilized in our own country. Thank you for watching Edupedia World videos.